Hello everyone, welcome to Game 10 of the World Chess Championship match. The defending champion Magnus Carlsen is leading 6-3, and with just 5 games left, the challenger Nepomniachtchi needs to start winning some games. However, today he has the black pieces, making it much more difficult to generate realistic winning chances. So I actually predicted that Magnus wouldn't play this move e4, uh, thinking that this allows the Sicilian defense after 1c5. It's a move that Nepo uh, is actually his main opening, uh, and it's actually a move he's used to beat Magnus Carlsen in classical chess back in 2011. However, uh, Nepomni actually decides to play e5, and I actually think this is a good decision. Uh, he's just lost two games in a row, his confidence is low, uh, it makes sense to stabilize, uh, get a draw, and then uh, try to start winning games with your white pieces uh, after the rest day. So um, Magnus decides to go back into the patch of defense, uh, but here he chooses knight d3, the first time we've seen this move in the match, but it's a move that he actually used against uh, Fabiano Carana in their 2018 World Chess Championship match. So after knight takes d4, queen e2, queen e7, knight f4, uh, Fabiano had chosen um, this amazing move, knight c6, uh, and uh, after knight d5, uh, there's this nice move, knight d4, and um, I'll actually give this uh, question to you. Uh, if white plays queen c4, uh, black has this amazing two move variation. I suggest you uh, pause the video and try to figure it out. Okay, uh, if you saw that after knight d3 check, knight takes the queen, knight takes d2 checkmate, well done. Uh, it's not every day you see two knights giving checkmate like this. Uh, of course, uh, Magnus didn't fall for this. He captured the queen, Fabiano captured white's queen. And uh, after um, a long game, it ended in a draw, but uh, uh, this game right here, but uh, not before Fabiano missed a win in an extremely delicate ending. Uh, Nepo instead chose the knight of six, and after d4, uh, he played a move that's, uh, that hasn't been seen before in the database, knight c6. We call this a novelty. Uh, this actually allows white to keep queens on the board with bishop e3, and after g5, knight d3, we get an extremely double-edged position. Um, but uh, this, uh, And certainly Nepo's team would have analyzed it deeply, uh, and it fits their match situation. Uh, as, we, as we talked about, he needs to start getting wins. So Magnus chose uh, the very solid c3, an excellent practical decision. Uh, as we saw in game 8, even with a one-point lead, he wasn't opposed to simplifying the positions uh, simplifying the position to a drawish game, uh, and here he does the same, especially with the three-point lead. Uh, we should also note that this uh, this is an excellent uh, pawn formation against the knight on c6, and it's worth remembering. The knight on c6 is severely restricted, uh, so Magnus just decided to keep the game simple. Uh, Nepo shows a deep understanding of the position and retreats the knight, trying to get it to a better square where, where it won't be as restricted. Um, and here another accurate move by uh, Nepo, bishop d6. If he hurries with knight e6, uh, he allows white's bishop to get to this very active diagonal uh, and ha have some uh, annoying pressure. So he chooses bishop d6 first. Um, castle, castle, bishop d3, rook e8. Uh, and now only uh, after some trades he plays knight e6. Now Magnus was very happy with this move g3, uh, the idea is to play knight g2 and trade off uh, black's good bishop. Uh, we call it the good bishop because uh, um, you want the bishop to not be blocked by its own pawns. So Magnus has his eye towards trading that. Now he plays f3, if he goes immediately with bishop f4, he allows uh, black's bishop to get active which is not what he wanted. Um, now Nepomni actually played this very precise move, so as we've seen previously, uh, the idea of prophylaxis is to understand what your opponent wants to do and prevent it. Uh, here he stops um, this bishop f4 because after something like this, uh, white has these uh, doubled pawns and uh, weakened pawn structure, which is not what he wants. So uh, Magnus plays king f2. Uh, in the press conference, he said that g4 was not so patient. If he wanted to play for more, uh, he needs to be patient and uh, he criticized this move g4. Uh, Nepo said he was worried about a4, like a queenside expansion. Uh, still, uh, I think the probable result would have been a draw anyway, but uh, as Magnus said, if the match situation was different, he would have tried to play for the tiniest of edges, which, he, which is what he's so good at, squeezing water from a stone. 
Um, instead, after g4, knight g7, bishop f4, um, Nepo cho chose this amazing uh, g5. Uh, it had to be very accurately calculated. So after knight e2, uh, he plays f5, and uh, Magnus chose a3, but Nepomni actually had to foresee that... Um, sorry, after bishop takes f5, bishop f5, knight f5, rook g1. Uh, he actually keeps the pawn after knight d6. The point being, after takes, he has his knight e4 check. And after h4, king f7, hg, and rook g8. Uh, recovering the pawn, and the game will soon end the draw. So that was sort of the last uh, precise calculation he had to make. Um, afterwards, uh, there's really not too much to see. Uh, knight g7, important move, protecting the uh, 7th rank. And now king g6, forking the king, uh, the pawn and the rook. He recovers the pawn, and now uh, they're just trying to make it to move 40. Uh, draws can't be offered before move 40. Um, now Magnus actually threatens checkmate in move 1, maybe hoping Nepo is going to make yet another one move blunder. Uh, but here, of course, uh, he plays the uh, rook check, uh, forcing the rook trade. And uh, Magnus here offered a draw, which Nepomni actually accepted. So uh, six and a half to three and a half after ten games. Uh, tomorrow is basically a do or die situation for Nepo. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see what he, how he approaches it. Uh, who knows if he wins? Uh, it's going to add some intrigue back into the match. Uh, so I'll, I'll be rooting for Nepo. Uh, my prediction is he's going to go for another uh, one c four. I think that uh, he he got a pretty dynamic position. I don't think he's going to test Magnus in 1e4. Um, I think 1c4 will be played again. So uh, that's my prediction. Nepo win with a 1c4. Uh, and uh, hope to see you back for the game 11 recap. Thanks.